is me, it's Queen Osa Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask and Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. All right, guys, so I was asked by someone, how do you pick the perfect tarot deck? All right, for those of you out there who are interested in tarot or who've been looking at cards or who know how to read or whatever the case is, or who are just curious about it, I'll explain a little bit about this process. Now, once upon a time, in the old days, in the days of gypsies, and I guess gypsies are probably still around, but this would be in ancient times. I'm thinking of ancient Kemet and when divination first started, you know, looking at somebody's future, basically, or looking at, you know, their fate or whatever you want to call it, back then and for a long time afterwards, your first deck was gifted to you, usually by the person who taught you how to read. And you only had that one deck. <laughs> you had that one deck for a lifetime. Um, we've seen some of these decks, you know, um, at museums and in different, you know, historical exhibits. And they are worn. And when I say worn, I mean worn. You know, like this person probably used them 60, 70, 80 years worn. So... For a long time, that's how it was. Whoever taught you, gifted you your first deck, and you used that deck. Well, in modern times, it doesn't work the same way. Because in modern times, you generally don't have a teacher. See, back then, you were taught by your mom, your grandma, your auntie. You know, a family member usually taught you. It was a family tradition. Spirituality went through families. And tarot was a very important spiritual tradition in certain cultures and certain families. So your mom taught you these kind of things, or your family member taught you these kind of things, or somebody in the community who was designated to teach these kind of things. So anybody who showed the ability, and usually they would do a reading on you before you were born, and they would know who was going to be shown how to read based on what your soul said in the reading it was coming to do. So if my soul said I was coming to be a priestess or I was coming to be a reader or whatever the case is, depending on the, tra on the tradition, they would then, after I was born, I would begin at a certain age when they thought I was prepared. Every culture did it at a different age. Most of them, it was around puberty. They would start to teach me how to do divination, how to read. Some cultures use cards. Some cultures use bones, cowrie shells. <laughs> they use all kinds of different things. Um, black ink. Um, a lot of different cultures all over the world do some type of divination and they use something. Cards were used mostly in like the Middle East and Europe around that area. They were, you know, using cards, but not the only ones. We see cards come up later with a whole bunch of different other groups. So when you look back on it, like I said, your deck was usually gifted to you. But in modern times, you don't have a teacher. Most of us don't have an auntie or a grandma or somebody who comes to us and says, I see the gift in you, you know? <laughs> Some of us do. Some of us are that lucky, but most of us are not. And those of us who have the ability, we usually find out on our own. My mother didn't tell me anything about our family's magical tradition. And she knew that different members were priestesses and witches and I mean, my, my great, my grandfather's side, my, my father, not my father's side, but she knew about our side of the family and she didn't tell me nothing. <laughs> she didn't tell me anything. She is the one that gave me the children's Bible when I was really, really little and I was seeing spirits. So she helped a little bit, but she didn't give me any guidance. Like, why did you give me this book? <laughs> what is this supposed to do? She didn't tell me nothing. She had me reading the book and understanding the book, but she never explained how that tied into the spirits that I was seeing and what it was all about. She didn't tell me about my great-grandmother who did spells and potions. She didn't tell me anything until after I was already a priestess. Then she said, oh, so-and-so used to do so-and-so, you know, because to them, 
it, you know, in, in our family, it wasn't mainstream. It was, you know, everybody's Catholic in our family, you know? So anything like this was something that really wasn't discussed. It was kind of under the radar kind of thing, you know? Um, and some families it's open and it's honest and it's talked about, but it wasn't like that in mine. So she didn't tell me nothing. I found out all this stuff on my own. I saw the gifts in myself and was like, what is this? And decided to explore it on my own. And that's how I came to where I am today. I went and explored and I read everything I could find and I watched lectures from different cultures and I did a priestess initiation and I mean I just dug into learning and that's how I found out I taught myself anyway so how do you pick your first tarot deck with this being said well you're not going to get one from somebody you know who gives it to you nine times out of ten unless a friend or a family member gives it to you most cases you're going to have to go and buy one <laughs> you're going to have to go get your own so how do you pick one first of all if you're just learning how to read tarot i would strongly suggest you get the writer weight smith deck and I will put a link to that deck under this video. I recommend that deck because that's the deck I teach my students how to read on. Why do I use that one? Well, it's not the most attractive deck to me. Honestly, I have like, I probably have like 400 decks. And out of my deck, some are tarot and some are oracle cards. And out of all my tarot decks, the Rider Waite Smith is the least attractive. I have some beautiful decks, but the Rider Waite Smith is the industry standard. It's the first mainstream tarot deck. I mean, there were tarot decks before the Rider Waite Smith. There was plenty of them, but this was the first one to be done to be mainstream and sold to masses. It's still sold to masses to this day. So I always have my students get it because it's the first, it's like really the, the first teaching tool, in my opinion. And the symbols are very easy to see and easy to read, easy to understand. So I always have my students get the right of weight Smith to start. Now, after you know how to read and you know all the symbols, you can read anything. What are the differences between the decks? Well, let me show you some decks. Let me give you one card here. The first thing that you'll find to be different is size. This is a smaller deck. Look how small that is. Cute picture though, right? You can't see what it says, <laughs> but it's quite a cute little picture. This picture is the magician. It's one of the first cards in the tarot deck. So it's cute. Cute little lady, about to do some cards, you know. But look at the size of the deck. It's not really that big. Now, take a look at the other one I have next to me. This, uh, The first one I just showed you was called the Vanessa Tarot. Let me show you because anybody who's interested might want to check these out later. The Vanessa Tarot. That's the first one I showed you. That little teeny card, okay? These are cool. They're little. They come in a 10, that's a 10. And the other ones come in, most of the time they come in a box or in some kind of a cardboard. Now this is, this is the 78 Tarot Carnival Limited Edition. Now this one, look how big this box is. <laughs> Wait till I show you this card. This, these cards are much bigger. <laughs> much bigger than that other little card. And this is the Hermit, the Hermit card. There are 78 cards in a deck. Now look at the difference between the two cards. Look how much bigger that card is. So the first thing you're gonna notice is size. So you wanna pick a deck that is a good size for your hands. Using a deck that's really big, like that first one I showed you, uh, or really, really big, like the second one I showed you, is harder to shuffle. The small ones are harder to shuffle for some other people. It depends on the size of your hands. 
my hands are big so them little ones are not very convenient i only use those when i'm traveling the bigger ones because my hands are big i can handle those better so it depends on the size of your hands here's the harry potter tarot and as you can see it's like a medium size between both of those two cards so some people would find this size to be the perfect size. The Rider Waite Smith, the first deck that I mentioned, the one I said for beginners, is about this size. But you can get it in different sizes depending on your preference. So the first thing you have to figure out with tarot is what size cards do you want? And I would suggest, you know, trying different sizes because that's something that could be the kiss of death. I have several decks that I love, but I never use because they're so bulky to shuffle and inconvenient when I'm trying to do a reading. So size is first. Then you want to go with theme. Every deck has a different theme. This deck I just showed you is the Harry Potter deck. So of course it has the Harry Potter theme. They use mostly, um, like I said, uh, the, the people from Harry Potter. So it's a very beautiful deck. It's a really nice deck. And for those of us who are, you know, fans, it's really good. So you want to pick a deck that has a theme that you like. It's the Harry Potter deck. That's Harry. So that's Harry. The other deck was like a carnival deck. And a whole different theme. It's the guy with the fire in his mouth. And so the cards are always the same. But the pictures, the sizes, if it's in black and white or if it's in color, is what changes. So when trying to decide what deck to get for yourself, you also want to think about that. You want to think about, do you want a deck that's in color? Do you prefer a black and white deck? Um, also, I really like decks with people of African descent. And when you first start buying decks, you'll notice that most of them do not have people with African descent. So another thing I do is I look for unique decks with people who look like me. And they are out there. They are definitely out there. But you have to look. You have to really look for them. When you Google or whatever you do. So I like that a lot. Um, I have several decks that are predominantly are all people of African descent. And as you can see, the images are the same. You know, we're dealing with the same cards, but we're dealing with differences that can make or break a reading because like I said before, if you're if it's uncomfortable, you, you ain't gonna want to do the reading. Here's another African deck that I have. All of the decks that I have here, I'm going to put the links to them if, if they're still available. Because that's another thing about tarot decks. Sometimes they become unavailable. So if you see a deck that you really like, you need to get it. <laughs> because some of the times you'll see a deck and be like, oh my God, that is hot. And then the next thing you know is sold out and is $700. <laughs> and it was $15 when it first came out. Tarot decks can range from about $15, and if it's on sale, you might get one for $10. You might go to a, a, um, a, a used shop. Somebody told me they were in a thrift store, and they saw an old Rider Waite Smith deck that hadn't even been used. It was still in the wrapping, the plastic wrapping, and they got it for $3. So it depends on where you get the deck from. But if you get it from Amazon or a bookstore or something like that, in those cases, the lowest is usually about $15. The highest I've paid for a tarot deck might be about $200. The highest you could pay for one in the thousands. It depends on how rare the deck is. Some decks, like I said, are rare. They're out of print, so you can't get them anymore. So they'll sell them in like a unique tarot shop or something and some of them can be upwards of a thousand dollars so my point is is that if you want to pick a tarot deck start with the beginner deck 
And then after you know what you're doing, after you have a little feel and you know exactly how to read the cards, start to look at them. Look at them on Amazon.com. Look at the pictures. Look at the images. Go to bookstores and hold them in your hands and really look at the cards and try to decide what you want. I ended up with so many decks because... I was doing it more so through trial and error, and I would keep them. I wouldn't, you know, get rid of them. Some of them I have, I have sold, but for the most part, I keep them. That's why my collection is so large, and I use them because one of the things about Aquarius, we get bored easy. So every time I do a, um, every time I do a reading, I tend to use a different tarot deck. Now. Since I got this one, the one I showed you that I really love, the Afro Goddess, I'm gonna show, the, that was the one I showed you first. Let me show you the, the box. This sister really did her thing with this, this deck. I want to do a review on this deck. I has, haven't had time to do it yet. It's called the Afro Goddess Tarot Arcanas. And this deck is the one I showed you. She even autographed it for me. And this is the one I showed you with the people that look like me in it, right? So I just love it. I love the images in this deck. So like I said, I want you guys to really just, you know, are not gorgeous? I mean, she just did her thing. <laughs> she did her thing with this deck. But I want you guys to just really look through them because you have to think about all of the things that I just said and try to decide based on the colors, based on the theme, based on the size of the cards. And then remember, some decks are decks that are done for charity. So you might want to pick it up for charity's sake. Um, and almost all my decks are people of color. I do have decks that are not. As you can see, you know, the um, the Vanessa Tarot is multicultural. So I have some that are multicultural, some that are just one specific culture, such as the Africana ones. Um, I have one that's all Native Americans. So I have some of those too. I have one that's all Indians from India. So there's all kinds of different themes that they have. And if you really want to take a look at the different themes, some are more urban, some are rural, some are cats. <laughs> you know, they have a cat deck. Um, I have two, as a matter of fact, two, three, <laughs> three different cat decks. Um, they have so many different themes. There's probably like 20 or 30,000 tarot decks out there. So I would say if you want to pick a deck, take your time and look at different decks. And certain ones will scream to you. Certain ones will call to you. Certain ones you won't feel nothing when you look at them. Certain images are ugly because one of the biggest things about tarot decks is the artwork. And certain artwork, certain people are not going to like, you know. Um, some I've seen, I have new decks, but the people are all naked, <laughs> you know. So it just depends on what kind of deck you're into. You know, there's so many different themes. There's so many different things. And every day, new decks come out, just like books. Every couple of months, another new hot deck is on the market. And they're all different themes. So take your time and look through them. Because I guarantee you, most of you will end up with more than one deck if you really start to look at them. Because that's what happened to me. I only wanted one deck. My first deck was the Egyptian Tarot. Love that deck. And then I saw other ones and I was like, ooh, these are pretty. Pretty gold foilings and amazing artwork. So I just started to get the ones I liked. And the next thing I knew, I had hundreds. <laughs> Literally, you know. So you don't have to collect them if you don't want to. You could just go look through them and find one that really moves you. And that's your deck. Okay, so that's how you pick a tarot deck. It's kind of like how to pick a pet, you know. You look at the different attributes to the pets. You look at how much work it's going to be to take care of them. You look at colors. You look at how long they're going to live. You look at pedigree. You look at all these different things and see what fits with your lifestyle. It's the same way with a tarot deck. Look at all the different things they have to offer and see what fits your lifestyle. Okay, all right, guys. Thank you for being here, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh, by the way, 
if you're interested in getting a tarot reading, <laughs> email me. All my information will be underneath this video. And I'll be glad to give you a tarot reading. Um, if you would like to become one of my patrons on Patreon, please check out my page. That is underneath here as well. If you'd like to send me a donation, that would be much appreciated. My PayPal is under here. If you'd like to send me a gift, my Amazon wish list is under here. And all my information to contact me on social media. All right, guys. And I'm going to link all of the decks I just talked about in case you want to look at them online. All right. See you later.